Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to show you how to make this very simple application that you see here. This is a C Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application. And what is this going to do? Well, this is going to take a sequence of images and squish them all together into a single video. So why would you need to take a bunch of images and squish them into a single video? Well, in our previous video, we showed you how to write an application that will make what's called a time-lapse video. And here is an example of what we created in the last video. And this is basically grabbing live streaming video. We showed you how to do this previously. But what it's doing is every 30 seconds in our case, or twice a minute, it's grabbing one of the images and saving them into a folder. And then what we're doing with this application, we're going to show you how to build today, is we're taking all of those images and squishing them together into a video. So here is our folder with all of the time-lapse images that we generated in the previous video. In this case, there's over 700 images taken every 30 seconds or twice a minute, so that's like six hours worth of video frames that are all squished together. And if you use this application we're going to develop today, you make a video like this that it plays six hours back in maybe 30 seconds or something. So um, that's one reason why you might need a uh, image sequence to video converter. Another reason is a topic we discussed previously where we talked about generating what's called a 3D animation. And this is an example of a 3D animation I created in a free software called Blender. And I built this uh, spaceship from scratch and used a background image. And, and this basically, Blender will take this animation that we develop and spit it out as a sequence of images that you then have to do what we're going to do today, take all those images and make them into a video. So those are just a couple reasons why you might want to make a sequence of images into a video. So we're going to show you today how to write this application to convert your images into a video. So let's show you how this works. When I start it up, um, it's basically got a text box and a few buttons. And the first thing it does is it tells you what video writer backends are available. We're going to be using EMGU-CV, which is a C-sharp wrapper for OpenCV. We've talked about that previously. And we have on our system some back, what are called backends, that are going to allow us to take those images and write them to a video file using the uh, EMGU-CV or OpenCV video writer. So this is just giving us some initial feedback on what backends we have available for our codecs. So the first thing it's going to do, we're going to select what images we want to squish together into a video. So we hit that, and here are our images, our 700 or so images. So we'll select the first one, and then shift select the last one. And now what it's doing, it is reading the 718 images and it's going to, when it's done, it's going to tell us it's done. And in this case, it's probably going to take 35 seconds or something like that. It takes quite a while to read in those 700 images. And they're all 1920 by 1080 images. So there's a lot of data there. So now it's done. It took 33.3 seconds. And now what we can do is we can press this convert to video. And fairly quickly, it's going to convert that to one video file, and here you go, it's done. Video file save to uh, videoout.mp4, which is that video that we just showed. So here is the resulting videoout.mp4, and there is our time-lapse video. So let's take a look at how we can write this C-sharp application. Again, we're going to have a text box and a few buttons, and that's about it. So let's go and look at the code. So here is our very simple C-sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application. And as we talked about before, we're going to use a um, library called EMGU-CV. 
And we've talked about how to install that, but that is basically a C-sharp wrapper that allows you to access the very popular OpenCV library. Now, the first thing we need to do, we've talked about this before, is go to Tools, NuGet Package Manager, Manage NuGet Packages for Solution, and we need to download and install emgu.cv by emgu corporation, emgu.cv.bitmap by emgu corporation, and emgu.cv.runtime.windows by emgu corporation. Again, we showed you how to do that uh, pretty straightforward, but you need to download those. And then it's very important that you set this up not for any CPU, but for x64 in our case. And to do that, you're going to have to go to the Configuration Manager and add a new platform. And we've got x64. We showed you how to do that previously. It's really important or else it's not going to work. So here is our basic application. Um, we've got some using statements using emgu.cv and then using system, system collections.generic. We're going to make some lists, system drawing, and system windows.forms. So basically the design of this, as we said, we're going to have to drag and drop a text box to give us some feedback, and then three buttons. And all we have to do is double click on those buttons to get the event handlers. So the UI is really, really simple. I've set this up as I do virtually all of uh, my C Sharp videos on this channel. I'm using regions, pound region and pound end region. We've got some documentation. We've got uh, a to-do list. We've got some parameters that we're going to discuss. And we've got our form one initialized component that comes with the form one. And then the initialized variables is a method that we're going to develop. We're going to talk about that. And then we've got event handlers. As you can imagine, we're going to have three event handlers for each of the buttons. And one of the buttons is going to select the sequence. The next button is going to convert that into a video file. And then this is going to be an exit button. And that's about it. So let's first take a look at the documentation that kind of explains what this is going to do and how it's going to do it. So as we mentioned before, this app reads a sequence of images and converts them to a single video file. It uses EMGU CV library, which is a C Sharp wrapper for OpenCV. Now, presently, the supported input file formats when reading the image sequence, and that is a EMGU CV supported input file formats, include bitmap, BMP, PNG, and the ones we're going to bring in are PNG, JPEG, TIFF, and OpenEXR. There are some others, but these are the most common ones that you'll probably be using. Uh, OpenEXR being a um, high dynamic range that we've talked about in other videos. Now in this example, we'll use the PNG input files and save the video as a .mp4 using the H64 codec and the MSMF backend. Now we've talked about that in previous videos, so I'm not going to go into details, but um, we're basically going to use this H.264 codec. Each input image file is read into a list of mats. And we talked before in EMGU CV, it's, a mat is basically a matrix or an array of pixel values. So we're going to get a list of mat. And in our case, there's going to be over 700 uh, mats or images in that list, which is then accessed by the EMGU CV video writer class to convert that image sequence to a video file. Note, the video writer will overwrite any existing video file with the same name. Also, the process of reading the files can take a relatively long time for our 700 PNG files that are about 4 megabytes each, or a total of 2.8 gigabytes. It takes around 30 seconds. We saw, we saw 33 seconds. However, converting and saving the video file to disk might take only a few seconds. In our case, it was like 3 to 5 seconds, so very quickly. And um, as we saw when we started this up, we're getting some feedback. The following video writer backends are available. FFmpeg, GStreamer, Intel MFX, MSMF, CV Images, and CVM JPEG. And each one has an index number associated with that. So you can specify that to the video writer, what backend you're going to use. Again, we talked about this in previous videos. So that's the basic um, description of what we're going to do. Um, we also have a to-do. We want to add asynchronous threading so that when we're 
doing our reading. We don't lock up the UI. We can talk about that later. Here are some of the parameters we're going to use. We're going to have a video writer, which is an emgu.cv video writer. We're going to call it video writer. Um, and as we talked before, we're going to define a codec. In this case, we're going to use a codec H264. And to specify that, you do video writer.4cc and enter these characters, and it will then recognize this codec we want to use by returning an integer, and we're going to call it codec1. Also, we're going to choose a backend index of 1400. Again, we said before that the available backends that we will see are these, and we're going to use the MSMF, which is index 1400. And we're going to have a list of mat, or the EMGUCV mat, or matrix, defining each image. We're going, to call it, we're going to call it image sequence mats, which is a new list of mat. And then we're going to define the input directory and the output file name. So the image sequence directory that we're bringing in, D documents, and I'm just calling it time lapse images, and all of the images are going to be in that folder. The output file name is going to be D documents time lapse videos, and we're going to call it video out.mp4. And then all we have is a number of files equals zero. That's just to give us feedback. When it's counted all the input files, it will tell us how many it read in. So those are the basic parameters. And then next thing is going to have the standard initialized component. And we're adding a method called initialize variables. And here is the initialize variables. And what we're doing is we are generating that list in the text box of the backends. Um, and we've done this before in previous video. We've got an array of backends called backends, and that's CV invoke, where we're invoking an open CV method called writer backends, and that returns an array of backends. Then we're going to give some feedback with what the results are. Textbox one dot append text, video writer backends available. And then for each backend, we're going to call it BE in this backends array. We're going to grab the name and the ID, BE.name and BEID, so that we can give the user a list of the backends and the associated ID that we're going to need. So very straightforward. It's going to go through and list those out. And then at this point, we know what um, the output file name is going to be. We know what the index is going to be. We know what codec we're going to use, and we know we're going to use 30 frames per second, and we're going to resize it to 1920 by 1080, and we're also going to use true because it is a color image. So here we've instantiated the video writer. Again, we've talked about this in previous videos. So now we've got everything initialized, and what's going to happen is the first thing is the user is going to check the select sequence button to read in the, in our case, 700 or more images. And this event handler shows an open file dialog, and the user selects all input image files to be converted. It stores those images in a list of mat. So here is the way we're going to do the open file dialog using open file dialog, and we're going to call it open file dialog is new open file dialog. And then we're going to set that open file dialog the parameter called multi-select is true. So that means we can select all 700 by shift selecting them. Otherwise, you can only select one file. So we have to set the multi-select as true. Uh, open file dialog dot initial directory. We've already said here's the directory uh, in the parameters for the image sequence where that's located. And then restore directory equals true. And here we have if open file dialog dot show dialog gives you a dialog result OK. If everything works, then we're going to go through and start reading. So we're going to also time it. We're going to do a daytime. We call it start is daytime now. And then we're going to say, OK, we're going to start reading the images, reading image sequence of, and we're using open file dialog dot file names dot length. And that will tell us how many have been selected in the open file dialog. And that's going to tell us we're reading an image sequence of, in our case, 718 files or images. And then we're going to step through each of those and save them, read them in, and save them as a mat in our list of mats. So for each string file in open file dialog.filenames, 
So for all 718, we're going to increment the number of files that it's read, and we're going to say the input mat, we're defining a mat, CV invoke IM read. And the IM read is what actually grabs the file from disk, and we're going to read that file, and we're going to convert that to a mat, a matrix. And we're going to call it input mat. And then we're going to add that mat to our list of mats. So image sequence mats.add input mat. And we're going to do that in this case 718 times. So our image sequence mats, our list of mats, is going to have 718 elements. Now it's not saving it, it's just grabbing all those and storing them in our list of mats. And then we're going to say, okay, now it's done doing that. So daytime end equals daytime now. And the time span is the difference between end and now. So we're going to print out text box one to pin text. The elapsed time is ts.totalSeconds2 string with an F1, so we only want one decimal point, seconds. So now we have stored all of the files in our list of mats called image sequence mats. And then the user can go and press the next button where it takes those and sends them out to the file. And this is very simple. Event handler steps through each image in the list of mat and writes them to the video file. So for each mat, we're going to call it image in image sequence mats, video writer dot write that image. And then it's going to keep writing all of those, but it hasn't actually saved the file to disk. It's just written them, but you have to do this video writer dot dispose to actually save the file and close it. Right, so very, very important. This dispose method is very important since it's what actually saves the video file to disk. So at this point, we have read everything, saved it to disk, and we're going to give a little feedback, a pen text, video file saved to whatever the output file name is, and now it's all done. So the user can then select this button exit.click, and that just does an application exit. So really, that's the entire application. Um, in the future, we may look at cutting down the time it takes to read in those, in our case, 718 images. Uh, it takes about 30, 35 seconds, something like that. So we may be able to help that by doing it either with the GPU or by doing it in a separate thread so we can still access the UI. But that depends on if there's any interest. But that's about it for this one. If you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.